What have you learned about helping people mourn? I think it's such a powerful insight around how to make change happen, which is, you know, it, it enables people to move on when you provide the space and the ritual to kind of say it like a, in a formal farewell to something. But I mean, we can't all go out and like burn our Viking ship on a huge pyre <laughs> of wood because, you know, <laughs> just environmental laws just make that tricky these days. So how do you find space for people to mourn what might be past to allow the future to emerge? Well, one is, I know that you focus so much on and thinking about the coaching habit about yeah. learning how people learn, right? Like that, yeah. aiding in their discovery of that. So I feel a lot of my work is also about acknowledging and being transparent that learning is emotional. Oh, it is emotional. I love that. And, and we don't treat it as that, right? Think about what's happening with our synapses at the time. Think about, you know, there's so many things happening that learning does have an emotional piece to it. Obviously, when we see, when you're really excited about something, you're learning something new, when you're hearing tragic news, right? Learning is inherently emotional. So when I, I understand that deeply and personally, so I, I try to think about the other person and say, okay, this might be the time to punctuate um, a team feeling better, giving an example, showing that what they worked on in the past, that they could see um, remnants of it in this future plan, right. right? Yeah, right. So that they can they can stay hopeful. Right. Uh, the other part is sometimes you have to do some celebration. I mean, it, it varies, right? Yeah. Right? Sometimes there are people who don't want to traverse that experience, right? And it's time for them to move on. It's yeah. not always a happy moment. But I think when you recognize, I guess the last piece when you say, how do you help them move? I guess the last thing I would say is, when people are giving you feedback and change during a change situation. It's really about the change situation, it's not something else, <laughs> right. right? Like I joke about it, right? You know, my husband, if I'm arguing with him over some socks on the floor, <laughs> it's, not, it's never about the socks. Yeah. It's never about the socks. So why do we think it's about the socks when we're talking about change, right? Like, yeah. so it's like unpacking that and not taking it personally, right? You know, it really, um, that insight is such a powerful one. It reminds me of um, the the Marshall Rosenberg idea around um, the difference between wants and needs. Now, I know Marshall Rosenberg mostly for oh, yes. his idea around nonviolent communication. But mm -hmm. in, in that work, I think in the context of that work, he said, look, wants are the, the superficial things that people point to, like, for instance, the socks on the floor. But behind the want is always the need. And the needs are things like, you know, affection or... Um, understanding or protection or freedom or, or you know it's there's like eight or nine or ten oh, fundamental absolutely. human needs that drive us and part of what you're pointing to I think is to allow change to happen you need to see beyond the wants to understand the deeper needs that need to be honored as part of the process absolutely and and in this case thinking particularly in an academic context I think of myself as a rogue academic. I don't think of myself as a traditional <laughs> right. academic, but uh, because I'm so involved in different things, but it is about relevance. Yeah. Right. The need is for relevance, right? The need for some who are closer to retirement is legacy, right? Yeah. Right. And right. this is a big change. So I, like, I, I think about those things. Yeah. And that said, I mean, Greg, if you're listening to this podcast, you should pick up the socks off the floor. I mean, just deal with the socks, okay? <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm hoping he listens to you. 